Hello and welcome to Leadership, Complexity and Inclusion. I'm Dr Will Foster and I'm Director of the MBA and Executive Programmes at Keele University. In this series of public talks I've invited a range of senior leaders, chief executives, executive directors and organisational leaders from a diverse range of sectors to speak to us about their professional and personal experiences that have informed their understanding of their leadership role. And there are a number of talks that have already taken place and you can watch these on our YouTube channel. But then COVID and lockdown happened. And this has been an unprecedented event in our generation's history, and one that has had and is having a profound effect on all of us. In the midst of all the challenge and difficulty, and in many cases, pain and sorrow that COVID has brought, I'm grateful to the very busy leaders who have given up their time to take part in a virtual interview to share their reflections and insight into the effect that this pandemic has had and their thoughts on leadership in this context. Today, I have the pleasure of launching this mini-series about the pandemic by interviewing the Vice-Chancellor of my own university, Professor Trevor McMillan, who's in overall charge of Keele University. Trevor, thank you very much for agreeing to speak with me. Hi Will, it's really good to be able to talk to you today. To help us get a feeling for the complexity in leading a university, I wondered if you could tell us a little bit about your organisation to give a feel for the size, the number of staff, the main activities, and perhaps tell us a little bit about your role, please. I think many of you will be very familiar with the university. We are on the small side of medium as universities go. Um, that's about 2,000 staff, 11,000 students, but the biggest university in the UK in terms of the area of our single campus. We were actually started as the first publicly funded university in England in 1949, and we had a very clearly stated aim of being innovative in education, but also playing a significant role in local communities. Both of these things remain true today, and they sit alongside a real desire to address some of the greatest challenges that the world faces today through world-class research. The new investment and the increased external facing approach of the Kiel Business School exemplifies all three of these aspects of our work and, and our research institutes in sustainability, global health and social inclusion demonstrate the critical areas that we believe are important to address. As Vice Chancellor, I'm, I'm formally accountable officer for the whole university, although I do report to a university council that has a majority of external lay members. The, the university is a, a complex set of different operations. Clearly, academic education and research are at its heart and are the main focus for what we are here for. But to support that, there are professional services that you would get in any organisation, so HR, finance and estates, for example. While we do get public funding, we are not formally classified as a, as a public body. So we, we do need to fulfill many of the functions of a private sector organization in terms of financial sustainability and governance, for example, while also being accountable to a government regulator, the Office for Students. Delivering a high quality education and experience to our students also goes way beyond what happens in the classroom or laboratory. Our campus services such as catering, accommodation, etc., plus supporting our students when life gets tough are things we take very seriously. And, and I suspect that's why we have an unparalleled performance in the National Student Survey. So you can see my role involves oversight of a wide range of activities. And in my case, I'm fortunate to be surrounded by a talented, dedicated and hardworking senior team, as well as the whole university that really does have a passion for this university in a way that I think isn't usual within the higher education sector. Thanks Trevor. I have to say that having only recently joined Keele 10 months ago myself, there is this Keele difference. There is something unique and special about this particular university. 
Prior to this pandemic, could you tell us what had been the main challenges and dimensions of leadership at Keele, please? We actually published a, a new university strategy last year uh, on the basis of five P's, purpose, people, partnerships, place, and performance. Um, and it's not really appropriate to go into all the details of these, but you can find them on the web if you want to have a look. But, um, but it did outline our reflections um, really on how we need to keep looking at our purpose as an institution, maintaining that long-term view of academic excellence set against the needs of our staff, students, partners, and indeed our, our communities that we serve. We don't have the advantage of scale, as I said earlier, but conversely, we, we should have the advantage of agility. So how we balance all of those different elements in order to support our staff and our students to maximize their performance and contribution to the university and society undermines basically the, the overall challenge that we have. We do though have a, a broader challenge and, and that's common across the English universities and, and, and that is that we currently do not have a sustainable funding model for higher education in the UK. And I think in fact this has been well demonstrated in the COVID crisis. The, the capping of undergraduate fees for several years now has meant that growth has been a key underlying strategy because as your as your costs go up if you're if the cost per or the the income per uh, individual student stays the same then clearly in order to match that increase in cost you've got to increase the number of students um so growth has as i say has got to be part of that major strategy and and also the sector the sector has developed a major reliance on the recruitment of international students in order to support both education and and research on top of that, there are only a few situations where the full cost of research is actually recovered from funders. So the interdependence of all of these things makes it, makes it quite fragile. And as I say, I think that's been well demonstrated at the moment. At Keele, we have indeed achieved significant growth over the last few years through increasing the number of UK undergraduates that we've recruited. This has been a significant achievement when set against the demographics that have seen a gradual reduction in the number of 18 year olds over that period. But we have still had to look very carefully at our finances and a major sustainability plan was launched in 2018. It's a, it's a three year plan, but without the successes that we saw in the early stages of, of that strategy, it would have been an even bigger challenge for us uh, to respond to the, the crisis that we're currently facing. Yes, as you say, we, like many other sectors, were having to respond to the financial constraints, particularly the governmental change had brought in the light of austerity. And then COVID struck. What effect did the pandemic have on Kiel and the demands and complexities of its leadership? As with most organisations, the flip to doing as much as possible online was, was the major change uh, that was needed immediately. And, and the core leadership challenge was to try and enable our staff to do that as quickly as and efficiently as possible, while recognising that as individuals, all of our staff and students were facing very, very different challenges in their personal lives. A ensuring that our staff had the right resources, for example, the technology, um, to do what they needed to do and to, and to support them also as individuals through uh, showing some flexibility and, and some understanding and, and all of that has been critical. Um, and while we're, we're far from complacent about this, it, it was pleasing to see that in a survey we did with staff just a couple of weeks ago, so that was what, eight, eight or ten weeks into the, into the current lockdown. Um, that actually the large majority of our staff recognise the efforts that have been made and are pleased with the support that has been, that has been given and are able to do uh, the job pretty much as they expect to be able to do it. Now, of course, while all that was happening, we did have students around the world that needed to come home. We had students on campus that were deciding whether to stay or not, or some who just couldn't, couldn't go home, whether they were international students or, or there were other reasons maybe with vulnerable um, relatives that they didn't want to go back to. Uh, so all of that was going on. We also have staff who, who literally couldn't do their job for home and, and, 
and that was tricky for them. On the other hand, we do also have a big estate that needed to to be looked after. Um, so we have had a constant flow of staff into the university to do a lot of the operational st stuff to make sure that our buildings are, are maintained in a good usable state so that when we can start moving back, then actually there is there is no backlog work to be to be done before before that can, that can happen. So the big leadership challenge really was therefore to ensure that all of these things were being addressed to make sure that we were making decisions rapidly when needed, placing a lot of emphasis on communicating communicating with both staff and students and ensuring that appropriate governance processes were in place. Um, a small core team um, has met every day and we've maintained and in some cases increased our meetings with both our council members and with our staff in key leadership positions around the university. I have to say I'm, I'm very proud of how both the staff and the students have adapted in the last few weeks. Um, now of course we all need to think about what comes next and what lessons we can learn from how we've done things in the last few weeks. Indeed, this whole move to remote working has brought some rapid changes in a complex situation with staff and students and other stakeholders and I agree that time to reflect and learn from the process is essential at an organisational level. At a more personal level I know from speaking to other leaders that this pandemic has affected them personally as well as it has many of us. How did the whole Covid situation impact on you as a leader and what were the personal challenges perhaps and difficulties that you had have to and are having to navigate? The last few weeks have indeed been challenging and stressful but to see how the university has responded and how staff have embraced the issues, identified solutions and put them into action at speed and at a speed that would have been considered absolutely impossible before this crisis. Um, that actually has been very satisfying. Uh, we have put a lot of thought and effort into regu regular communications that we've been sending to staff and students. Um, and this hasn't been easy because the situation has been changing so quickly and there's so much uncertainty about what will happen, uh, happen next and in the next academic year. Um, for example, when we start to get back to normal social interactions, etc., that we really don't know yet how that's all going to be going to be working. But it has been important that we've been as clear as we possible can about our situation, um, about what approaches we're taking now, and what we're thinking about in terms of planning for the, the future. I'm sure we haven't got everything right um, when you're when you're making these sorts of decisions quickly uh, in, in an arena where you, you really haven't got all of the, uh, the past experience to run on. It's, it's impossible to get it right all the time. But um, we have listened and we've tried to respond to both staff and students as we've been, as we've been going along. Again, stressing the, the staff in particular, it has been important to recognise the range of situations that our different staff have found themselves in. We know, for example, that our BAME colleagues and their families may well have been affected more by the virus. And there is evidence emerging that women have been effect, impacted more in terms of uh, work disruption through higher caring responsibilities. We are trying to support this as best as we, we can now, and we're certainly working out how we need to recognise this in different ways as we emerge from the crisis. I think it's also important to, to note that at a personal level, um, for me, it does need and has needed a conscious effort to get a little bit more exercise and to, to stay as healthy as, as possible. Um, that is partly about that physical activity uh, when you don't have to walk between meetings or walk as part of your journey to, to work, then you just can end up sitting uh, in front of a screen all day and, and not even stretching. Um, but it's also about that mental health side. And I think that it, that is important and, and trying to make sure that you don't become disconnected from either work networks or, or social networks. And, and that is something that I've tried quite hard to, to do. Um, it is interesting that there is no doubt that the, the current situation has been built on a significant amount of existing social capital clearly built up while we've been meeting people face to face. Um, 
but we've all got to now think a little bit differently. And I don't know how this is going to work, but how do we build up those those strong relationships when it's through a medium like like this, more more online? It it can be done. Many sectors, many organisations um, do that on a on a regular basis, and I, I think the university sector has quite a lot to learn in terms of how we actually, let's say, develop those collaborations, develop those relationships in a more remote way. I think what you've said will strike a chord with many. It has been a significant leadership challenge to be as clear as you can be in the context of uncertainty when decisions have to be made quickly without all of the information available. And I'm really pleased that Kiel is taking the gender and mental health and social issues that have surfaced seriously. As we now anticipate and contemplate what a, a new normal might look like, how has the pandemic changed or refocused your understanding and practice of leadership? I think the pandemic has emphasised specific aspects of leadership rather than change my view, really. Um, I think, as I already mentioned, communication has been absolutely critical. And while some of that was inevitably had to be around information transmission, we have tried hard to get the message across that we recognise the challenges that staff have had and they want to support staff as much as we can in, and also indeed for our students. And we need to provide that support even remotely and put a number of things in place, um, for example, in terms of remote mental health counselling, if, if that is needed, although um, actually we've, we've had effectively no take up for, for that. Um, and we shouldn't underestimate how, how social contact is an important part of what some staff get out of coming to work. And, and so despite things like online coffee drop-ins, which I suspect many of you have been doing as, as we have, um, this is harder to maintain uh, re remotely. And, and so I think it is the challenge of the leadership to try and encourage that as much as you, you can in, in sort of slightly dynamic ways. I think for me, the pandemic has also emphasised really the, the importance of, of teamwork. It, it's not uh, a time for the, the heroic leadership approach. It is a time for actually being part of a team and recognising the, the input. And as I said earlier, I am very fortunate indeed to be surrounded by a very strong team that can both challenge and support each other in different ways in order to get things things done. And those two sides of it are important, that challenge and the support. It's very easy to get into a into a bubble and a, uh, a bit of a, a sort of self-confirmation -com within, within the group. So it's important that you have those relationships. I think that, that again, are that bit more agile and, and, and challenging at times in order to try and make sure that you actually get the best outcomes. Um, because when things are moving quickly, um, it is impossible to keep on top of absolutely everything that's going on. And, and, and while having good processes and, and governance helps, and that is absolutely critical, um, knowing that people are responding, trusting that they're responding, trusting that they're, they're innovating and making things happen is is absolutely critical and um, again as I've said earlier we, we do have many dedicated staff here at, at Kiel and I continue to be really amazed um, but actually not no longer surprised at the the efforts that they go to on behalf of the university. Finally I think again because things happen so quickly um, you do become more conscious of how you need to be a bit more adaptable. I, I suspect that things are moving at normal pace. Then you can change your style slightly without actually recognising that you've done that. But in this situation, for me, it, it, has, it has been more obvious where through different phases um, of the response to the pandemic, from that emergency change phase where, for example, we had to put all of our teaching uh, online within a week to the slightly slower pace of the development of new modules or new modes of working. So the teaching and assessments, for example, to, to the end, in our case of the current academic year, through to then that detailed planning for next year. The, these all need slightly different approaches and certainly a slightly different tone in, in terms of that messaging that you can put out to to the university and the staff who were working really, really hard. And and, um, and on the one hand, actually 
wanting to be left alone to get get on with it. On the other hand, clearly wanting as much idea as possible what might be coming next, which in itself creates the challenges when actually there's so much uncertainty around that. So, so changing that that tone and some of those approaches during this, I think, as I say, has has been accentuated during during this period, which I've, I found quite fascinating to think about. Thank you. I'm sure many other senior leaders will feel the same way. As you know, one of my areas of interest in leadership is organisational culture. Um, so, what effect do you think COVID has had or has? revealed about Kiel's culture? This is a fascinating question and it's one that I'm not sure I know the answer to yet. Um, the situation has confirmed and highlighted what we already knew, that our staff have a huge commitment to supporting students as a priority. The level of innovation and creativity from staff in the new learning environment has been really impressive and it's important that we capture this and build it into our education delivery in the longer term. I suspect we're all a bit surprised as to how well and how quickly we adapted to the new working and learning environment. Uh, and again, we all need to consider which elements of that may become long-term changes. There is little doubt that we will be working differently. We will have more staff working remotely on a, on a regular basis. We will have students engaging with their education in a much more flexible way. And our research is likely to be much more fundable if it relates more directly to the immediate needs of society and our partners and the communities that we, that we work with. For Kiel, we, we will continue to be a university that is on a scale where personal working relationships can thrive. Uh, and, and indeed use that to enhance the academic performance of both the staff and our students. So while the tools that we will use to communicate with each other may be different, the Kiel difference will continue to be based on that sense of a supportive community that thrives in that drive for academic excellence. Thanks Trevor. I really appreciate your time in taking part in this pandemic and leadership series. And I'm sure that many of the people watching will have found this insightful and thought provoking. Thank you. Thank you, Will. It's been great to talk to you and good luck everyone and stay safe. Thank you. So that concludes our first interview. As Trevor said, stay safe and stay well. I hope you'll join me next time when I'll be interviewing the Chief Executive of Staffordshire County Council, John Henderson. Thanks for watching.